So what is your command's narrative? What is the narrative of your organization? What is the commander's intent, the commander's vision? Now we talk about strategic communications a lot and what that really means. But what it has come to mean today, I believe, is more narrative. What is our story? And if your story is the one that's out there first, it is your story that is remembered. And everything you say and do is true to that narrative and it's true to that brand. Because at its very most basic level, what public affairs is, what public relations does, is protect and enhance the reputation of an organization. I have a lot of friends who work in <clears throat> different um, organizations, different companies, and I belong to several of their groups. So I got to go to their session this summer that was hosted by Santa Fe Pasteur. They make vaccines. And they talked about the issues they had several years ago when they were starting to make the vaccine for um, young people to deal with meningitis. And how do you get kids to want to take this vaccine? What they did was find a spokesperson, and that spokesperson happened to be on a popular teenage show, Pretty Little Liars, and that became the spokesperson for that issue. But even as we're talking about this, they talked about the problems they had much earlier with, remember all of the issues with, do vaccines cause autism? What can you say to an outraged mother, when you, even as you know that it's not your vaccine that caused this? Could they win that argument? They wanted to protest it. They wanted to start doing counter press releases and finally realize it's not going to work. Leave it alone. You'll only make it worse. Sometimes you cannot win when facing public outrage. Remember all the issues with body armor? My parents have to go out and buy their own body armor because what the Army has isn't sufficient. So equipping is even one of those. So we have to look at what will the reaction be? What is it likely to be? I'll tell you what, how many of you have been successful telling your mother what you do in the Navy or the Marine Corps, the Army? What do you tell her? Tell her I'm basically a journalist for the Navy, so I'm pulling it down to you. Okay, so it's in mom speak and she can understand it and yeah. tell her friends. Okay. Anybody else? I tell her mom, yeah, I'm a photojournalist for the Marine Corps. Tell the Marine Corps story. And she gets that. Yeah. Anybody else? My mom was in the Navy for 20 years, so she already understood. Oh, she already yeah. understood. Yeah. Oh, so she's asking you more questions. Like, what's your dorm like? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I looked at a lot of Air Force dorm videos this past summer. Because um, I'm looking at social media, and what social media is is a conversation. And to be part of the conversation, you have to have input. So I'm looking for things on YouTube posted by Junior Enlisted. What do I find in the Air Force pages? Here's my new room. Over here's my refrigerator. There's the window. Some of these are 20 minutes long. But they have 40, 50,000 views. What's the interest? Me, my career, where I go next. If I go to Robbins, what's it going to be like? If I go to Elmendorf, wow, cool. They have a iter rod display in the dining facility. Part of my experience. So you go to that experience. This quote, I didn't realize it was Ted Cruz who said it. I'd saved it from a New Yorker magazine for a couple of years. But it's true about choosing the narrative and choosing when and choosing where and how you do it. So what's the narrative here? A lot of different groups have a lot of different inputs, have a lot of different views. Where is this now? It's on hold. The court martial is on hold. How difficult is it to talk about this subject? Especially when you ha have national cartoons that go to it. You have narratives from members of his unit who said, we lost people going out to search for him. You have the hometown views that say, we saved him. You have the issues with the detainees released from Gitmo. 
So you have a lot of different narratives here. One of the things I have done in the past is explain legal terms. I can't discuss a case, but I can explain to you what AWOL is versus desertion. And sometimes I think that is helpful in getting media to understand terminologies. Sometimes you're, you don't say anything, but it sounds like you're saying something. I know that sounds ridiculous, but bear with me for a minute. I'm talking to a reporter about a unit deployment. And they said, why is this unit chosen and not that one? So what's running through my head is, well, readiness reports and how much equipment and do they have the right number, all of which is classified. So I said, well, many are called, but few are chosen. The reporter said, oh. It satisfied the need of the moment. Did it say anything? <laughs> no. Did it work? Yeah. And it was totally accidental, so. But there is always a way you can say something that can add or contribute, even though there are many things you can't say, particularly during active court cases. I'll tell you, um, wherever you are, you can offer to do media training for your JAG office. They don't teach that in the JAG school, and for JAGs involved in high-profile court-martial cases, they will need this. So it is a service that you can provide, and it will also help make those relationships. And what all of this goes to is, yes, this. The thing you have seen over and over. Uh, which one is this? The Gallup poll from June of 2015. What US institution is in first place in terms of our respect and our admiration in this country? It's the military. And I will tell you, they do not differentiate. I spoke to a group this last summer at a PR firm in New York City. And their first question to me was, I didn't know the Army and Navy were separate. You know, sometimes you can be asked things that are just so amazing, you don't have an answer. And I said, oh, they're very separate. I probably could have given a much better answer to that, but I was just kind of floored by it for what people know and what they understand about what we do, what all of you do. Hey, and look who's in last place. <laughs> Any surprise? Um, these fluctuate from year to year, from pollster to pollster, but they're pretty much, it's pretty much the same. Um, for the last 20 years, I think the military has been in first or second place. The pictures we want to have remembered, the visual image we want to see people recall first when they think of the military is not this, but it is this. These are the stories that we need to keep telling, keep telling, and of course we have these opportunities to do this. Spencer Stone, um, friends I have who work at UCOM now say anytime they go to Paris they want to get on the train with the American Airmen Protection System. So that's kind of their joke for that, but they're pretty serious actually. And we'll see another Medal of Honor ceremony here soon for a Navy SEAL. Um, some of these individual pictures. Now I go back to what I find on YouTube. I love seeing some of these videos where, where we see soldiers and airmen dancing around and I think some of them are hilarious. There are some that are inappropriate. And I used to talk about those to my JAGs. In my last command, I had the Army's new legal command. I had 1,875 attorneys. Now, that was a tri uh, real <coughs> experience. We would send them taskers at first, and they would send us back legal opinions on why they weren't going to do them. So we had to come to an understanding there. But I would show them some of these videos, and I would say, what do you advise me? And then watch them have a million opinions and argue amongst themselves. So you will get all kinds of opinions on what is appropriate and what is inappropriate. And even as you are asked questions and in what you say, don't we watch people slip all the time? Even politicians, even royalty, even celebrities who are in the media and in the news all the time. You stay with the things that you would say to your mother, you know, about what you do or how this is going to come out, and I think you're going to be fine. 
And again, there's a lot of other stuff out there. What do you think about um, documentaries? What is the issue with documentaries? They stay around. They can be seen over and over. You'll see them on the plane. Um, our, own, our own publication, Stars and Stripes, Army Times, what do they focus on? Besides those pay and benefits issues, they focus on what I think is somewhat sensational. I'm sorry? Scandals. Why? Because, because we're used to scandals. Because that's what we read. If you, if you go get your hair cut, I will read People magazine when I go get my hair cut. I won't buy it. You know, I have a little pride left. But I'll still read it while I'm sitting there. Um, and, that's, and that's what these things are. Our culture, our celebrity-soaked culture, and some of these issues that seem to bleed into that, that type of arena get much more attention. But on the other hand, we now have the other side of the story. American Sniper, the movie that perhaps the studios didn't think would be that successful and was huge, especially in Texas. Um, games, Ghost Recon, America's Army, the biggest video game in the world. No Easy Day, the story of the killing of bin Laden and General McChrystal's new book. He has another one out on um, Team of Teams, which is a great book about how you integrate teams. You send the best person from the PA office over to the JAG office, they send the best person over there, and you have a little cross-training. And then uh, Michael Murphy, These, these Navy SEAL, there's still things about him on YouTube. There's still things about him in, on Facebook. Some of these sites that seem to recall these folks. And then Zero Dark Thirty. I had to watch that one twice. I had to watch it twice to get the acronyms. So I know there's a lot of people who thought it was way cool even if they didn't understand half of what was being discussed. And there's still issues with this as to what was leaked by whom and when.